So now I want to put all this into context, into a real context, because it's important for you to see how important this kind of information actually is and in our understanding of it and how we use it. Now normally what I would do is talk about uh, a particular sequence of a particular gene called PRB uh, associated with cancer. And so if you have the older uh, slides, you're going to see those slides. I'm going to change that. I'm not going to have slides on this. What I want to do is to uh, bring this into context uh, that's important literally today. Uh, this past week, uh, a paper was published that showed and confirmed how it is that this particular virus that we're dealing with, the SARS-CoV-2, uh, gets into cells. And like I had mentioned, uh, it uses that ACE1 um, uh, gene that we have as human beings. But what I want to do is take you to this website here. Here we're back to the NCBI. And this is a site where they have uh, a deposit of all the SARS-CoV-2 sequences um, that, uh, that have been uploaded at least to this site, which is most of the ones that, are, that have actually been discovered so far. And this site is phenomenally useful. It's the exact same kind of data that we had that I showed you with uh, the human genome. But what I want to do is to take you down here. And this table uh, are, is a list of all of the sequences that have been made of the SARS-CoV-2. The top one is the one I'm going to show you. That was from China. So this is a virus that was obtained from a patient in China and completely sequenced. I want to show you that sequence. So I'm going to take you here to this uh, right here, reference sequence. Uh, and it is going to give us a bunch of information that uh, will show us exactly what's going on in the genome and the organization of the genome of this virus. This is the Wuhan uh, Human uh, 1 particular uh, uh, strain of this uh, coronavirus uh, that we've been dealing with, and it's probably one of the first uh, viruses that actually uh, started the entire epidemic. So here we've got a bunch of information, and it shows you the locus of the, of the virus. But now we're going to look, like I said, at the viral genes. So all of this stuff well, you can read through if you want, but what I want to do is take you down to here. Now here is a really, really detailed uh, set of information in a format that is specific to uh, particular genome sequence analyze, uh, analyzers uh, software, which is why it looks like computer code, because it basically is. But you'll notice it has these links over here. Now, if you see here, 5' UTR, UTR stands for untranslated region. We're going to see what that is. But if you remember, what I showed you before was a portion of the promoter was copied ahead of the coding region, ahead of that ATG sequence. That's what this 5' UTR is. It's a section that's part of, the, in essence, the promoter. It's a little bit different in the case of a virus. But it doesn't have any information about how to make a protein. And you'll notice the numbers 1.265. What that means is the uh, first nucleotide all the way to the 265th nucleotide is this section that is like the promoter. It's not actually going to be uh, translated. I'm going to click that link, and I want to show you what it does. Click that, and it takes us here. This is the actual sequence of this isolate, this particular virus of SARS-CoV-2 that they obtained in, in Wuhan. And all of this right here shows you that sequence. Right there is the, is the, the sequence that is not translated, uh, and it's on the 5' end. Now remember, they're showing this the way I said. This right here, we see ATT, AAA, GGTT in the first 10 nucleotides. It's not shown the complementary sequence. Complementary sequence, of course, would be T-A-A-T-T-T, C-C-A-A -A in this first new 10. They're not showing you this. And again, you remember the way we show this, this is the 5 prime end. So we're not, we see in our minds that complementary strand, but it's not written here. OK, so that's the 5 prime UTR. So I'm going to scroll back up here. And the next one says gene. And it says from the 266th nucleotide, all the way through the 200, the 21,000th, 555th nucleotide is a gene, all right? Now, if we go here, part of that gene right here is this section called CDS, and you'll see here where it says translation, and then it has M, E, S, L, V, and so forth. Each one of these letters codes, uh, means a particular amino acid. The M, for example, is methionine, and each one of these letters is, is an amino acid in the protein. And so what you're looking at here is the, is the structure, the actual primary structure of that particular protein, each one of these letters, again, being an amino acid. You can see it's quite long. It's really huge. I'll just keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. That's all one gigantic protein. Okay, so that protein then 
is made here in this particular sequence. And if I click this, it will show the amino acid sequence, that, I'm sorry, it'll show the nucleotide sequence that codes for exactly this amino acid sequence. So let's click it, and it takes us here. All right, so this whole browned out region is the set of nucleotides that tells the cell, or sorry, tells the virus how to make this particular uh, protein. All right, now let's start up here. We go all the way back up to the top, right here, and notice the first three, ATG, like I said. The coding region for every single one, every single gene, uh, starts with ATG. That's, that's what we call the start sequence. And notice over here they're showing you, uh, again, the translation. They're showing you the amino acid sequence coded for by the region that, that is highlighted here in brown. Okay, so if we go all the way down to the bottom of the coding region, and we scroll all the way down here, this is, like I said, these genes are huge. If I tried to put this all in one slide, you'd never be able to see it. But notice the last three, TAA. That's the end sequence for this particular gene. So this whole thing is one of the genes associated with, uh, with uh, this virus, the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2. So that sequence, again, is making this, sorry, let me say it again, let me show you again, this nucleotide sequence is making this amino acid sequence to make a particular protein. And let me show you one of the key proteins that's being made. That paper I was mentioning has shown that this particular protein, which is coded for here, if you look here in this sequence in here, you'll see that this protein, the code for the amino acid sequence to this protein is shown. Now, this amino acid sequence, though, is not, or this protein is not being shown in its primary structure. You should recognize this as the tertiary structure. Remember, the tertiary structure of the proteins is how the protein folds up into its functional shape. And so this, then, is this protein uh, in its functional form. And let me show you a, a three-dimensional view of it. This is what we call a ribbon diagram, and I'm going to go through what all of these things mean. These things are called alpha helices, and then you have these things called beta pleated sheets. But if you look at the protein, this is its tertiary structure in three-dimensional shape. And you'll see these things sort of sticking off like that. That's a sugar. So technically, this is what we call a glycoprotein. It's a protein that's got a bunch of sugar moieties, a bunch of sugar molecules attached to it. But here's the point. Let me go back to this. This sequence here codes for this primary sequence here which then folds up into this protein. And that's the central dogma. That's how the central dogma actually works. As a summary to this lecture, what I would like you to do is to go to the Cold Spring Harbor DNA Learning Center. Uh, and in particular, I want you to uh, watch this six minute video uh, called, called Chromosome 11 Flyover. What it's gonna do is take you to human chromosome 11 and just one part of it, just the tip, of it, and it's going to show you how it is that the DNA is organized, the genes and the introns and the exons and so forth of a number of different genes in that region. And I would watch it more than once to get a sense for how it is that these chromosomes are organized because it's an excellent example of how human genes and how human DNA is actually packaged, organized, and functional. So. I will put a link to this uh, video onto the uh, lectures webpage. I'll also put out a, a link on the Canvas announcement page so you'll know to do this. But I would watch this particular video uh, after having gone through the entire lecture, but before you take the quiz, definitely before you take the quiz for this particular lecture.